Backstory, I, female 61, am a solo pet sitter and dog walker. In 2020, no one could travel and were working from home, so I was unemployed. One kennel closed. Two of the local veterinary businesses stopped all boarding. In 2021, things opened up for travel. My old clients started asking for service. Tons of new requests. Since 2021, my wonderful brother-in-law, 56, has been dealing with a disease. However, recently he died very suddenly dropped dead in the street within view of his own house. Very traumatic for my sister, female 59. There was a gathering at the house the following evening. I met my sister. She told me everything. We cried and hugged for a long time. I was devastated for her. Problem, I was told the services would be on Tuesday at 11 a.m. The church is 40 minutes away from my service area, and I was massively overbooked. Several of the dogs I walk are reactive. I contacted other pet sitters to see if anyone could cover. They were overbooked too. I told my sister all this and that I would get there as soon as possible. I could tell her reaction was shock as I told her I wouldn't make the service. I had informed my elderly mother of the situation. I also told my adult sons who were going to be at the funeral. I prepared all my clients and let them know I was doing quick letouts and short walks. I watched the service on Zoom between letouts. Got there by 1 p.m. I hugged my sister and talked to a couple of other people. I didn't think too much of it at the time. What I realized now was a chilly reception, which I took for shock and grief. So later that same day, I got a call from my mother telling me that right after the church service, my sister was angry and livid that I wasn't there. My mother tried to explain it to her again, but she didn't have it. She hasn't spoken to me since, with the exception of some brief communications about my mother's health. My mother suggested therapy, and I was perfectly willing to go. Sis could yell at me all she wanted. She refused. I tried to call and message many times, but none of my calls or messages were ever returned. I gave up and decided to go to therapy myself. It was great for understanding what she was going through. The therapist pointed out that my sister not only lost her husband under traumatic circumstances, but that he was the main income, so she was facing financial difficulties. Also pointed out that part of the grieving process, anger, is sometimes misplaced and that it was far easier to be angry with me than at God or my late brother-in-law. I'm angry. It's hurting my mom, who's 87 and feels like she's in the middle. She has just us two and five grandsons. So, am I the idiot for missing my brother-in-law's funeral service? You are the idiot. Honestly, it's wild that you're even questioning it. Here's the thing. Your sister just lost her husband suddenly and traumatically, and your priority was dog-walking? You couldn't manage to rearrange your schedule for a single day to show up for her in one of the worst moments of her life? Look, we all understand that work can be overwhelming, but this was your brother-in-law's funeral, not some casual get-together. The fact that you couldn't prioritize your sister and family over your client's dogs is honestly mind-blowing. OP, I'm completely perplexed why you couldn't just tell your clients there was a death in the family. Then, they would have needed to make other arrangements. That's what happens in an emergency. And all you can say is, I was busy. That's beyond tone deaf. I'm trying to wrap my head around how you'd ever think this was okay. Yeah, I'm just sitting here imagining my sister's face if I told her I missed her husband's funeral for dog walking. Brutal. Stop hiding behind your job like it's some sacred responsibility no one could possibly understand. You chose to prioritize animals over your sister's traumatic loss, and now you're facing the consequences of that choice. I, 30 male, and my husband, 33, have a tween daughter who's been going through severe bullying at school. It just keeps getting worse. It started with name-calling but has worsened over the past few weeks. Context, she's adopted, which is something we've always been open about and celebrated as part of her story. Recently, some kids found out about her adoption and started saying horrible things, telling her stuff like her birth mother didn't want her. They tell her that she's unwanted, tell her she's a reject, which is not the case. Her mother loved her very much to the point she literally gave her life so she could be here, if this wasn't bad enough. A few days ago, she came home in tears with her hair butchered. They cut off two inches of her ponytail while in class, taunting her with names and laughing at her reaction. They will follow her through the halls to make fun of her regularly now. Both my husband and I have been in touch with the school about the bullying more times than I can count. I emailed, called, and even showed up in person to speak with teachers and the principal, but all I got were empty promises that they'd look into it. Nothing has changed, and my daughter's mental health has taken a hit. She's anxious, struggling to sleep, and now begs us not to send her to school. 
Finally, out of frustration and feeling like no one was taking this seriously, we contacted a lawyer to explore legal action against the school and the bully's family. Only when the school and her parents learned we were considering legal action did they start to act. Suddenly, the school calls me to say they're moving the bully out of my daughter's class and claim they had a talk with her. The girl's parents reached out too, saying they'd talk to their daughter and promised it would stop. But honestly, I don't believe them. It feels like they're all saying this just to get me to back off and avoid the legal consequences. I worry that once the dust settles, things will return to how they were and my daughter will still be dealing with this. My family thinks I should give the school and parents a chance now that they're finally taking action, but I feel like it's all for show. So, am I the idiot for moving forward with legal action even though the school and the bully's parents now claim they're handling it? Yeah, sorry. Bullying with name-calling is one thing. Physical abuse to a child by cutting her hair during class is completely different. Why didn't the teacher do anything? Why did the teacher allow scissors in class? Why was the bully not sent to the principal immediately? Why weren't you notified immediately? Why did your baby have to come home with messed up hair, basically a signature of abuse, for you to find out about it? I'd be suing the school and that teacher directly for neglect, as well as the kid's family for abuse. Not the idiot. Protect your kid. Teacher here, I can promise you that this family is a bunch of bullies, at their jobs, with people in general, and they've been getting away with it forever. This is a lesson their child must learn now. I can also promise you that if your child defended herself in any way that caused the bully shame or harm, your child would have been punished severely by the school, and the bully's parents would not back down. I'm pretty sure that the kids who cut your daughter's hair could be charged with battery, so I hope your attorney is suggesting you consider pressing charges if possible. Do not back down. Two years ago, my parents' marriage ended because my mom found out dad was cheating and had another woman pregnant. My sisters and I, nearly adult male, teen female and young teen female, wanted nothing to do with dad afterward and he wasn't given any formal custody. We had a decision to make if we wanted to see him. We didn't. He had a daughter with the other woman a year ago. Now their daughter was taken by CPS and is currently sitting in foster care. My grandparents, dad's parents, want my mom to raise her so we will know her and so she will have us growing up. Mom said no. At the same time, they were trying to pressure us to accept visits with us so she'd know us anyway, but my sisters and I weren't interested. My guess is they want us to meet her, so we'll ask mom to raise her. Mom did get a call and was asked if she would take her by a social worker, but her no was the last contact we had with the social worker. We only had contact once before that, when we and she was asked if visits between us and the girl were wanted. They weren't. My mom tries to keep my sisters and me out of it, but I've heard her lose her cool and answer the phone to tell my grandparents to leave her alone. I also heard my grandparents call her names and remind her over and over that my sisters and I are related to this girl and mom should want us to know each other and be close. I heard mom crying the other night, so I called my grandparents and told them to leave my mom alone. They tried to defend themselves, but I told them to stop. I brought up them calling my mom cruel earlier that day and asked them how they could be cruel. I asked why they didn't take their granddaughter and why they wanted her to be somewhere she wasn't wanted, loved or cared about. They spluttered over the phone but I didn't really let them speak and I told them that's exactly what they're trying to set her up for and it's not good. I told them none of us want her here or want a relationship and they're the cruel ones for trying to force her in here anyway. They went crazy yesterday over what I said. Mom finally blocked them but they're also trying to make themselves heard via social media. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It was very courageous of you to stand up for your mom. She is raising an amazing young man. You are absolutely right. They are cruel and this is especially mean considering this is your dad's affair child. They need to focus on their own child, your dad, and help him get the help he needs since he lost custody of his loved child. I agree. They know he won't do anything and are passing the issue on to your mom. Imagine plastering over social media that your son's ex-wife won't take his child and not being ashamed that his child has literally been taken away from him. If you want to go scorched earth, don't let them control the social media narrative. Call them bad parents for raising a cheater, call them bad ex-parent-in-laws for supporting a cheater and harassing their grandkid's mom, and call them bad grandparents for not stepping up to support their affair grandkid. Last weekend, my parents went to a wedding and left me, teen male, and my sister, tween female, with our grandparents. My parents wanted us to come with them, and my sister wanted to go to the wedding and get dressed up and stuff. 
But my sister isn't known for behaving well and the friends who were getting married didn't want her there as a result. So my parents were in a bad mood and my sister was upset. My parents coddle my sister a lot. She acts really babyish because she's treated like one by them. They make me act like it too. I'm supposed to be soft and caring with her. They'll make me do stuff with her because she wants to and it doesn't matter what I'm doing. They interrupted me during homework to drive with her and mom to her extracurricular activities because my sister wanted me in the car. They make me give her hugs if she wants them, even if I don't. I have to hold her hand if she wants to hold mine. They took the lock off my door at home, so I'd need to let her sleep in my room if she wanted to. Stuff like that is normal for us, and saying no doesn't do anything. My grandparents have said they go too far as well, but my parents brushed it off. My sister doesn't like sleeping anywhere but in our house, so she hated the idea of going to our grandparents. And yeah, we could have stayed at a hotel if we joined our parents for the wedding, so don't ask me how that would have worked. But after our parents dropped us off, my sister was super clingy with me and she wanted us to do stuff together the entire day and be home with her to put her to bed. My grandparents knew my friends wanted to meet up, so they gave me money and sent me out for the day until late that night. My sister begged me not to go. She cried and threw a fit and continued after I left. When I got home, she still wasn't asleep, but my grandparents made sure I could stay in my room alone and let me lock it. My parents were so angry when they picked us up and my sister was still upset. My grandparents told them, our parents, they should be ashamed for letting it get that bad. My parents told me I should be ashamed for leaving my sister in distress like that and where was my love for my baby sister and a strong emphasis on the baby part. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot and good for your grandparents for getting you some breathing room to hang with friends and sleep alone. Seriously, what the heck is with that? Your parents aren't doing your sister any favors by babying her like that. They are setting her up for failure in the real world. They'll be lucky if you ever speak to them again once you escape from them and their overgrown baby. Exactly. Are they going to force OP to attend a nearby community college instead of a university further away and dorm elsewhere? Make OP get a hard-to-find remote job that does not do online meetings that sister can interrupt with a lockless door at whim when she's feeling lonely? Forbid him from moving out of the home because no roommate would tolerate a clingy sister not being able to access an apartment at a moment's notice. There's a reasonable accommodation to medical issues and disabilities, and then there's coddling. The parents are confusing the former with the latter. Can you move in with your grandparents? I'd be afraid your parents will try to force you to stay home after graduation from high school because they need you to hold your sister's hand. How is your sister ever going to be a functional adult when they treat her and you like this? You are not your sister's emotional support human, and they will all get a rude awakening in a couple of years when you move as far away from them as you can. I have two sisters, Jenna, 39, is the oldest, and Kate, 36, is the middle. I'm 28 female, the youngest of the girls in our family. Jenna started dating Joe, 40 male, in high school, and they got married at 20 and had their first child three years later. Together, they had Belle, teen female, Kai, young teen male, and Sorin, young teen male. When the kids were younger, Jenna learned that Kate and Joe were having an affair. She kicked Joe out and disowned Kate from that day forward. The kids were at least a little aware that Dad and Aunt Kate were together too fast for it not to have started when he was married to Mom. It ruined Kate's relationship with the kids. They were close before, and Jenna was always glad they turned against Kate and didn't turn her into Mom number two. Kate and Joe ended up getting married, and Kate tried to pretend that she was now just a stepmom to the kids or a second mom. I sided with Jenna and made it clear to Kate that I thought she and Joe were gross, and that even if they hadn't done Jenna dirty, which they did, they had made life so much more complicated for the kids. Of all the kids, Belle is the most vocal and clearly against Kate. She tells Kate she hates her, and she makes it her mission to make Kate's life hard every time she's with her and Joe. She doesn't ignore the fact that her dad is to blame, but he's far less interested in healing his relationship with his kids. But Kate cares a whole lot, from what I've been told. I don't really see or speak to her anymore, but I'm close with the kids and other family members see them together sometimes. Anyway, Belle has really given Kate a hard time and it bothers Kate. And until recently, she thought she could win them around, but then she found out that Belle had spilled publicly to friends, friends' parents, people at school, and people in Kate's life who she works with that Kate and Joe had an affair and Kate and Jenna are sisters. People have seriously turned on Kate, and it's hurt her socially at work. She's also being snubbed more in general. 
Kate was hurt and tried to come to me for comfort and advice on what to do, re Bell. But I told her that she should talk to our brothers, 33 and 30, or someone who does support her. I told her I wasn't going to be able to give any good or helpful advice and that she was just dealing with the consequences of what she did to our sister. She told me I could still be a better sister to her instead of refusing to offer my support. She said no matter what, we're still sisters and she did nothing to me. Am I the idiot? What to do? Don't sleep with married men. Not the idiot. Unfortunately, Kate found out now she has to deal with it that anyone in your family still talks to her is very compassionate and forgiving. Kate broke the family bond when she had an affair with her sister's husband. She has no right to claim that being sisters means you owe her anything. Being family is much more than biology. It's hilarious of her to ask you to be a better sister after what she did to Jenna. She's reaping the consequences of her own actions. She decided sleeping with her sister's husband was worth losing everything and everyone so I don't know why she's so confused now.